Where are we now, Mark? <laughs> well, Jim, sorry to have to drag you into this, but you're here looking at a 550-gallon peninsula tank with just a little bit of coral growth in it. Just a little coral growth. I mean, that's an understatement. This tank is huge. And what we're actually seeing is reef building happening. Coral is getting so large, the chunks of it are breaking off, getting shadowed, and becoming part of the rock work that new coral is growing on. If there was anything that looked how the reef looks, in a lot of ways it's this with stuff falling off, getting shadowed, not growing, and then something topples on top of it and they fight it. I mean, yeah, we got stuff all over the place and it's just a testament to leaving something be and not only in how he manages the tank, but also like, I don't think he's ever fragged this thing yet. Yeah, I can, I can see that. And this is Deep's tank. Right. He built the house around this amazing peninsula, right? Yep, it was a dream house and they got the dream tank and he did the best way to build a house ever, which is to put the tank where you want it and then start building the house around it, <laughs> which is exactly how they did it. This is right here in the first story. You come in the door uh, and you're greeted by the tank. At the same time, they can relax on the other side of the tank because it's a peninsula. They don't have to steal away from their partner or their family to enjoy it. It's all right here, front and center. And as is typical with these tanks that you consult on, you help design, is this one is right here in the middle of the home. So it's really awesome right when you walk in the front door. And then the living room, dining room, all of it kind of centers around this 10-foot piece of uh, the ocean. Just absolutely incredible. And that was part of, I mean, this is the second tank I built for him. And the first tank, uh, he lived in a four-story apartment, the first story being half garage, half office. They were thinking the tank had to be on the first story because of weight issues. And I said, well, it's easier to put it on a slab, true, but if you guys don't come down here unless you're working, then you want to get away from work at the end of the day, and you, then you're back in your office looking at your tank. So we ended up putting it on the second story. Same kind of scenario, open floor plan where everyone can enjoy it. And he really liked it, so they wanted to integrate the same idea into this house with the tank front and center. A little bit of risk when you have a tank as such a central piece in your house in terms of what if you get an algae outbreak or it takes a little while for the coral to grow in. I mean, once it's full in like this, you're actually in the opposite situation where you're gonna have to start taking stuff out. Right. Uh, that's one thing, but when you get started or if, if you're going through some teething issues, you know, it, it, it might take a little while for it, for it to look like this, but you kind of get around that by doing a lot of automation. So what do you got going on here in terms of equipment to make this look like this and grow this quickly. So this is powered by six Radeon G5s, and we have four MP60s on the tank. There's no closed loop on this system. Since I built this tank I, on peninsulas, I've moved into closed loops, but this owner wasn't thrilled with the idea, so we left it off. He would tell you that he wishes that he did have it uh, for flow, just to mix things up in the center of the tank. Uh, and then there's a whole fish room downstairs, which is automated, I mean, he, goes down there once a month. Recently, the pump on his skimmer broke and he didn't notice it for two and a half weeks. So oh, wow. Because <laughs> he just doesn't go down there. Uh, I mean, he doesn't fiddle with the tank. He'll tell you that's one of his kind of secrets to success is he's- No hands in. Not in here, not fiddling around, not moving stuff around, just leaves it alone. And he finds out what the tank likes, just gives it that and then lets it do its thing and he gets rewarded with this. And I mean, going back to the, the lighting and the equipment, uh, as with an SPS system, he's running Four MP60s, 100%. He's running the G5s, 100%. This tank was actually grown from frags, though, under G4s, because uh, it's only two years old, roughly, with a coral? Uh, yeah, so he set up the tank, and then he went a different route than most, even how I do things. He left it with no coral in there. I don't even think he put fish in it for six months, uh, which, I mean, I don't do it that way because I'm like, I want, you put this thing in your house. You want satisfaction, gratification. Right. Right. If you wanted a, a rock scape, then you would go freshwater. We were in salt water for the colors, but I mean, again, this is each their own. So that's what he wanted to do. So he left it with him, fish and coral. Then he started adding in frags that he had from his other system, from his 225, which was as grown in as this one when we tore it down, um, and then let it grow out. He was not a fan of buying big colonies. He didn't even go after the designer corals as much but he's just let it rip uh, and it's gotten to where it is today. Absolutely amazing. Well, once again, just a really cool tank and just absolutely stunning in terms of what 
what's going on here. I mean, it's certainly hope for the ocean, I'll tell you, that this much coral grows this fast in two years. It's just absolutely incredible. There's, a, you know, frag racks all over with incoming frags, so when we hack stuff down, he can put stuff on there, and he's actually had so much success that his incoming frags have now overgrown <laughs> onto the frag rack. Um, you know, I mean, it's like a terrible problem to have. All right, very cool. Thank you very much. Absolutely, Jay.